Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where it's about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of Lovecraft Country. A great series premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and just straight up say this. This show is already, just in the first episode alone... Off the fucking walls. Like, I already knew the crazy shit that was going to go down in this show. I didn't expect us to get a lot of that in the first episode. Especially the last chunk of the episode. I was like, yo, we just like... We hints of that supernatural fantasy stuff. Oh man, things were crazy. Now, things got like fucking bananas at the end of the episode. It's not... It's, I mean, it wasn't even the beginning. It wasn't even the end of the episode. Look at the beginning. I was like... Because it just seemed like, alright, this is, you know, Atticus at war. I was like, okay, okay. And then shit got weird. I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? I'm sorry, I can't help myself. It was just like, what is this intro? What is this opening? Um, also, because I saw her name in the credits, I was like, I saw the alien. I was like, is that Jamie Chung? It totally ended up being Jamie Chung. But I was like, what the hell is aliens? And the dude, the baseball, splitting the Cthulhu-like creature in half. And he's like, don't worry, I got this. And the creature's coming. He's getting ready. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then he wakes up. I was like, okay. I was about to say, because I was like, the show, I know it has monsters and stuff, but it doesn't have aliens. I'm like, what is that? I was like, I didn't, it didn't make sense to me. It's like, oh, he's dreaming. And the reason why he was dreaming what he was dreaming is because he was reading the John Carpenter book, which I was like, okay. Which I've never seen the John Carpenter movie, and I've never read the books that obviously it was based on, but... He ends up telling the lady that he was on a bus with, I like, oh yeah, because he liked it because it's like, oh, he's in, and I didn't even notice. It's like, oh, John, because I didn't know, I didn't know how old those books were. I guess they're like super old, but he was like, oh, he's an ex-Confederate soldier, which for her, it's like, you were a Confederate soldier. You fought for slavery. There is no X to it. And obviously, and I thought it was kind of an interesting perspective Atticus had where he was kind of like, he, it, he liked that type of story where it's like the hero is flawed. Like he likes the fact that the hero is flawed, that the fact of the matter is, you know, trying to escape who you were. But even no matter what, you can't escape. And even Atticus, Atticus kind of acknowledges that. And it turns out the reason, because I knew like he was coming back, home, like he was getting mixed up in everything that's going down. Oh, I understand, like my understanding of the show was I felt like, okay, there's like this inheritance he was supposed to get that he's coming to claim and then shit gets wild. It turns out it's because his dad went missing and he went to find his dad, which is, I, there is messed up irony in that because he, his dad is the reason why he joined the army in the first place to get away from his dad. And it's like, now my dad's been missing for like two weeks. So I've come back home to try and help, you know? And so... Obviously, like, immediately letting you know, like, don't get it twisted on what time period this is in. You know, the fact of the matter is the bus breaks down. All the white people get to just, I was like, oh, don't worry, we'll take you. Him, Atticus and the lady have to walk because they're black, you know. And it's like, oh, the Jim Crow laws and everything. But it doesn't matter because it's like it's still that segregation, segregated um, era because it's like they're sitting in the back of the bus and stuff like that. You know, it's like still the colored and white only type of situation but nevertheless he you know stops by his uncle's place and it's his um uh, uncle um uh, george who's played by uh courtney b vance which i know him from like the thing that immediately comes to my mind is criminal uh law and order criminal intent's kind of the thing immediately but I, I know there's other things i feel like there's something even more recent i've seen him in that i'm just i can't remember what it was i feel like it was something fairly recent but i could be wrong um i think it's also interesting because obviously he meets leticia who's played by journey smollett bell i think it's like her last name um which i think is interesting because like obviously this is on hbo which is all under the warner brothers which was also under warner brothers dc and she played black canary in birds of prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one harley quinn and obviously her even her being on stage singing well it wasn't really a stage but outside singing immediately i'm like oh yeah because like obviously that's what she kind of does as you know um black canary as well so I just you know as dinah so i just thought that was just interesting i'm reading too much into it but it just immediately i couldn't help but click that in my head in that regard but um it was kind of an interesting introduction because i that's what kind of mind f's me about the show because it starts off bananas oh it was a dream sequence okay then we're just keeping normal and it's like well normal i mean sad type of normal when we had the racism but it's just kind of like okay this is just kind of everyday life um what i thought was kind of a fascinating thing was about what george does he goes out and he does um he does 
guides. And I thought that was such an interesting thing. Like, I don't, I guess that's a thing that happened in the past, which makes sense it would be, but basically he makes guides to let black folk know, like, stay the hell away from this area, this area, like, this is giving them a lay of the lands because I'm sure, like, getting a map, a guide, probably from, you know, areas, it's probably like, no, 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 these are for white people, your color, don't touch it. That's the kind of feel. So, like, the fact is that he makes them, I think, it's for that purpose, but also to let people know, probably, like, yo, stay away from this area. You're good here. Like, let you know what spots to avoid, like, if you want to, you know, kind of avoid too much. But, um, also, the actress who plays his wife, I'm going to, uh I'm going to butcher her name. I think it's, like, Ajun Ellis. I know I'm probably butchering it. I know her, like, like the mentalist. She was, like, the, like, she was the boss for a while at, in the mentalist. Um, she was also she all, she's also Sam's wife, you know, LL Cool J's character in uh, NCIS Los Angeles. I feel like there's something else I know she was in more recently I saw her in. Was she in um I haven't seen it but I know my mom has watched it, the ABC show Quantico. I want to say she was in that as well if I'm not mistaken, but regardless tangents and all that. But um it was interesting because she wanted to do it, but he was like, what, are you serious? But eventually it's because we kind of understand why, because he was like, because George has a shattered knee and he was like, he can't even imagine what would have happened if they had ran into his wife instead of him. So it's like, that, it's dangerous work. You're going to a lot of places. You don't know what's up until you get there and see what's up. So it's a thing of like, all right. Uh, but along with all this stuff, you know, um, Atticus, you know, has a letter from his dad. That's what another thing that kind of made him decide, like, oh, I'm going to come back here. What's the fact is he's like, oh, like, I'm going to teach you about the legacy on your mom's side of the family. Like, there's some stuff about her past, you know, because, like, obviously she passed away some time ago. It's interesting. Stuff in the episode makes me think George used to have a thing for her. It's like, oh, like, his brother got with her first, but I think he always had a thing for her. Maybe things didn't work out, and it led to them getting together. I don't know, or maybe... Maybe we end up finding out that Atticus isn't his nephew, that that's actually his son, because him and um, Atticus' mom had an affair. Immediately where my brain kind of went from, it's almost like some, like, uh, Hemlock Grove type of shit, because that's what Roman's, you know, uh, history ends up being, that the fact is his dad wasn't his dad, it was actually his uncle. Regardless, tangents and all that, and that's kind of immediate, an example. There's other examples of that, I'm sure, but that's the one that kind of immediately comes to mind. But I am curious whether that ends up being the case because he ends up pulling out the picture of a lady. I don't, because that didn't look like that was supposed to be his wife. I think that was Atticus's mom. And that's why it's like, you have a picture of her in your wallet. I'm thinking like, oh, she's super important to you. Um, especially, you know, kind of skipping around a little bit. But the fact of the matter is him, like, because it's like for Atticus, it's like, his dad, like, you know, because Atticus talked about the fact that he was going to be interviewed for obviously being, you know, having been in the war, being a soldier in the military, in the army, and was going to get interviewed about that. But his dad is like, not only is it bad enough that you signed up to protect a country that doesn't, that downright hates you, but at the same time, you're also going to do an interview to try and make other people, you know, other young black kids think like, oh, I'm going to do this, you know, and get them to sign up for something. You know, in his mind, it was foolish. And, um... It turns out, because, like, obviously George tries to defend his brother by being, like, he was young, he was smaller, he was weaker, and he's like, I didn't do my job to protect him. But then, like, Atticus is like, you didn't do shit to protect me either. What what about me? You know, because he's like, because George is like, I, my biggest regrets is, like, I did stick up for my brother. And he's like, are some of your regrets also not looking out for me? And I think that's what that all stems from, because I think he knows Atticus is his. Like I said, pure speculation at this point in time but it's just like it just immediately makes you think of that like that's what i'm thinking and maybe it's a situation that atticus dad might know maybe he doesn't who knows but um i just thought that was kind of an interesting thing obviously it's like but it's like because like like i said the moment like atticus mom got brought up in the letter and stuff like that like George kind of just, I don't know, he just seemed a little, like, caught off guard, like, I guess, like, hearing her brought up after all this time, but regardless, it's, like, because we also learned, like, um, H.P. Lovecraft has, like, a special place for, like, Atticus, because, like, but there were books that his dad didn't appreciate him reading, it's, like, read real good literature, not this, you know, probably quote-unquote trash in his dad's mind. You know, but it's like, okay, there's something here that, you know, maybe it's related. My dad wanted me to go with him here. So it's like, we need to go to this um, um, place, um, Ardham, Ardham, 
um, and it was at Devon County. And so he goes on a trip with Letitia and, you know, George. Letitia, obviously in town for a little bit because, you know, it seems like she kind of bounces all around, but she's only in town because she needs money. But she's like, I don't need money. I just need a place to stay. Her sister gave her a place to stay. But it's like, no, you can stay with me for two days. It's like, well, what about the other place? Oh, you mean the place that dis that's no longer there because mom, when mom died? And she's like, oh, you're trying to throw it in my face. She's like, no, I'm not trying to like guilt you or whatever. But it's like, mm, technically she was. Because obviously she gets into it with her brother later on because it kind of gets thrown in her face. It's like, I sent you money so you could come back home from mom's funeral. What kind of child misses their own mother's funeral so that kind of it seems like she's the type that kind of like goes off she's kind of almost like a free spirit in a sense of like she kind of does her own thing it's almost like i think she's kind of probably in their eyes like oh this is our super idealistic sibling that kind of does whatever she wants but when the time came you should have been there for mom um obviously there's a lot of stuff there and Atticus was about to interfere but George was like no that's family business they're not family which obviously you know probably bugs Atticus a little bit because it's also like well what about family you weren't really there for me when I needed you you know so I'm sure especially after having just had that conversation I'm sure that's kind of an interesting thing um nevertheless um obviously going to different places still obviously having to deal with like the racism of everywhere then there's that you know they went to stop at that restaurant obviously Letitia and Atticus were like we should get the hell out of here and then it's just like um you know Atticus notices the painting he's like he sees that the place is white he's like why now why was the white house painted white I didn't ever know that. I thought that was kind of an interesting history lesson or just like, oh, it's because it basically had gotten burnt down. And he ends up moving like a tile on the floor and sees that there's burns. And then Letitia's like, we need to get the fuck out of here. Bounce. Boom. They're being chased. Gunfire and everything. It's like, what the hell, dude? Like, things went from like zero to 60 that fast. Atticus having to fire at, out at them. Then there's a car speeding towards them. Now, what's interesting, though, is that car was like outside where Atticus was staying. Um, at the uh, you know, cause he went back home, cause he had actually talked about like, oh yeah, there's still dents in the wall from him, him and his dad's last like tussle, like when things got like bad between him and his dad before he left the last time he saw his dad, cause he even talked about the fact that his dad never sent him one letter while he was at away, but for you know George, he's like the fact of the matter is your dad would never bring you up as a topic, but he would sit around. 10, 11, 12 at night, whatever, it, however long it took for one of us to bring you up in conversation just so he'd have some idea of how you're doing, you know? So it's like your dad might not have always been being able to show it, but he does care about you, you know? So I just, you know, obviously shows their relationship is severely effed up and complicated. Fucked up and complicated. No point in censoring myself. I literally was dropping shit to the upset at the beginning, so I was like, who cares? Um, it's literally like any other review I'm doing. I, I have such a filthy mouth when it comes to re recording reviews. I kind of just let myself loose. Whatever the case may be, I'm going on a tangent that's super not important. But then, like, get, getting back to the point, like, the car ends up kind of almost protecting them, and then it stops, and it's like, and then the car, the car that's following them. You notice it didn't even hit the silver car. The car, like the truck, flips before it even touches the silver car. And it's like, what the hell? And it's like Atticus almost saw it. He's like, what? And then like the lady gets out the car. And she's looking at him. He's like, let's go, 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 go. And it's like, what the hell was that about? Because the moment like the conversation is like, oh, how did that whole thing happen? They just kind of looked at each other. It's like, oh, no, Letitia's uh, driving was crazy. But it was like, you're not going to know. I guess like Atticus might be the only one who actually saw it. It's actually interesting because it sounded like it could have been her, but it sounded like when Atticus called up someone's place and she was like, Atticus, she's like, Tick, is that you? She's like, you went back home, didn't you? She's like, you shouldn't have done that. That sounded like that could have been Jamie Chung, but too, because that could be where that is. Like the one, the alien princess that he was envisioning, obviously using, you know, his subconscious, creating that from mixing his reality of going to war, which also, you know, obviously with, um, John Carpenter having been a um, soldier as well. Like I said, I didn't, I never knew that because once again, I've never read the books and I never saw the movie. I don't know if they changed that for the movie or not, regardless. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you know, blending both worlds, his reality with that reality. So I'm assuming that's who Jamie Chunk's supposed to be. Maybe, maybe not. Like I said, I'm probably, I could be easily reading too much into it. But um, yeah, after that, they bounce. They, they're looking for... Um, they're looking for a bridge they're supposed to be crossing. And I thought it was so interesting. Like, obviously, it's like, oh, man, like, 
we can't find our way out of here. And then a cop rolls up, and I was like, oh, this is going to get gnarly. Because obviously there's, like, been break-ins into the area. Because, like, Letitia had looked into, like... Because obviously there's a lot of stuff not really on file about this place. But they already knew about the sheriff at the time. Just a lot of crazy shit going down. Like, a lot of animals in the woods and stuff like that. Regardless of all of that, that was kind of a, like, tense situation of just kind of like, okay... And, like, Atticus being like, oh, like, can are we can we legally make a U-turn here? And he's like, oh, look at you being smart. Because Atticus knew, like, oh, we made a U-turn here? He's going to use this as an excuse to keep us here because it's like, you know, they need to get out of his, out of this county or whatever. They need to cross the, the line before, like, shit gets bad. And it's like, you know, them having to, you know, in particular, Atticus having to beg and plead. And he's like, oh, good. Now you can be on your way and they have to drive. But he's also trying to obey the speed limit because he doesn't want any excuse for this dude to stop them the dude's bumping into their car i'm like dude i was sweating i was like oh dude this is gonna go sideways the damn clock is ticking because it got to like 709 because that's when it's officially sunset the sun goes out uh but nevertheless it's just kind of like oh but luckily they cr cross the train track like yes i was like oh that's good shit cops blocked them off all right let's go into the woods and they're using this as an excuse it's like no we're just passing through but Atticus messed up because it's like wait you say you're just passing through yet you know who I am so why do you know that and Atticus is like shit I messed up then we start hearing noises in the woods it's like no nah, that doesn't sound like a wolf and then proceeds they show out some like crazy monsters like monsters you think you'd see in like a heavily ass sight just a straight up science fiction I mean that's what this is too I think this adds an element of like science fiction fantasy supernatural whatever the case may be it seemed like something you see out of a video game like the, the, the monstrous forms that they had just seemed like and it's just like because he had actually referenced, like, oh, yeah, there's these blob-like things with, like, a ton of eyes. You know, it's like, oh, she's like, are they, you know, well, we can, you know, outrun a blob thing. He's like, well, all we'd have to, well, you know, all we had to do is be faster than Uncle George, which is interesting, you know, that was foreshadowing to the fact is he ended up getting left behind because one of the officers pushed him. Did shit not, like I said, not go from, like, it didn't go to zero to 60. It went to zero to 100, dark, bloody, ripped apart limbs fall one dude got his arm ripped and sliced off one dude got his head bitten off then his chest was ripped into it was like it was some gnarly bloody shit i was like dude we went straight to like i mean i already went into this like i said knowing like you know because i read up a tiny bit about a little bit more about it just because once again like i know that this is based on a book i've never read the book it's based on uh but the fact of the matter it's it's just kind of like and also from the trailers it's just like this shit look wild and it but like i said i just didn't expect it to hit this hard this fast even though it's at the end of the episode that was still way faster than i thought like i didn't expect shit to hit the fan like that like y'all being thrown into this i thought they're like oh you already got there you settled in and then shit got crazy I I didn't know you didn't even fully get there yet before shit went crazy. And they're having to hide and like Uncle George is out there alone. I was like, what? You can't kill off Uncle George, but it's like, no, he's fine. He's got the flashlight. The creatures are up there waiting. Obviously, they're stuck inside with the racist cops. So it's kind of like enemies having to unite of like, oh, my God, these things are coming after us. But George came in there and he made comparison to these things being vampires because it's like they only came out at night and they're adverse to the flashlight. So I was like, OK, so... Then, like, you know, Letitia has to be the one to run towards the car. Um, it's the only way. And then it's like, and then, like, the sheriff starts, like, kind of acting all sick and stuff. And you're like, what the hell is that about? And George is like, Atticus, what happens when you're bitten by a vampire? I was like, yo. I was like, are these things supposed to be vampires? Whatever the case may be, at the very least, they're kind of following vampire rules to a certain extent. He transforms, and Atticus is like, you better shoot him. George is saying, shoot that dude. The other cop didn't. Got his throat ripped. It wasn't just his throat. Literally, his bottom jaw and everything got ripped. I was like, Jesus, dude. Like I said, they're hitting this hard. And then, like, Atticus got the gun, shot him, like, once. A huge hole in his chest. Didn't stop him. Luckily, Letitia got to the car, turned the light on, and these things dig underground. The moment that happened, I was like, Jesus, that's going to be annoying as shit. Because not only are you going to be, these things are vicious and slice you to pieces and chew you to pieces. It's like these things can tunnel on the ground, too. You know, but um, luckily she had her camera and everything. Luckily she got back to George and um, George and uh, Atticus in time. But then there was like a shit ton of them outside, so they lit up the flares and stuff. Um, 
what was interesting though is you hear a whistle so it's like oh these things just aren't out doing their thing on their own like i think like that was something i was kind of picking up from the trailer that there are people behind this i would have assumed that the the um, sheriff and everything were behind that but it's like no like this whole um what was it artem thing it's kind of it seems like it's its, it's, its own beast like whoever this group is the ones who saved him from the in the silver car like you know it's like like i said i think this has to do with his mom's side of the family atticus's mom's side of the family but like whoever they are they have control over these things like they were whistling like oh come back like these things were dogs so it's like all three of them walking they cross a bridge and it seems like they wind wind up in artem and then the guy opens the door is like oh yeah we've been expecting you and it's like okay i'm already all in i was like yo this is i'm already in after one episode i'm like because i would seen some stuff being because i would seen like i didn't watch the video but i saw a double toast it like make a video where they were based i kind of think they had seen the first five episodes they were like is this show too weird and i'm like i'm seeing where they're coming from after just one episode i was like yo this is this is some wild shit, dude. That's all I can say. And I'm super all about it. I'm super pumped to see, like, where the hell this goes. What this is all about. Why all this crazy shit is happening. How this all ties into Atticus. Like, I'm assuming the people at um, Artem are connected to the lady in the silver car that was looking at Atticus. Maybe he recognized it. Like, it's just... <clears throat> I don't know what made him to say, like, why they were staring at each other. And he was just kind of like, go, go, go. Like... Is it because it, she looked familiar or was it just kind of like a, I don't know what the hell is going on, but we say we're saved, so let's get the hell out of here. So I'm so, so curious to ultimately see where all of this takes us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.